Welcome to Pre-Stressed Concrete Structures. In this course, you will be introduced to pre-stressed concrete and the different applications. In the first module, we shall cover introduction, pre-stressing systems and material properties. In this module, first we shall learn about the basic concepts of pre-stressing. From then, we shall move on to early attempts of pre-stressing. We shall go through a brief history of the development of pre-stressed concrete. And finally, we shall look into the development of building materials. That also comes under the brief history in a different perspective. The reference books that we shall follow in this course is, the first one is by Professor N. Rajagopalan. The title of the book is Pre-Stressed Concrete and the publisher is Narosa Publishing House. The second book is by Professor N. Krishna Raju and the title is Pre-Stressed Concrete. The publisher is Tata McGraw Hill Publishing Company Limited. The third one is an international book. It is written by Professors T. Y. Lane and N. H. Burns. And the title of the book is Design of Pre-Stressed Concrete Structures. The publishers is John Wiley and Sons. The fourth one is also an international book. It is written by Professor A. Nilsson. And the title is Design of Pre-Stressed Concrete. And the publishers is John Wiley and Sons. The main code that we shall follow in this course is IS 1343-1980. The title is Code of Practice for Priestess Concrete. It is published by the Bureau of Indian Standards. Remember that you are expected to know IS 456-2000, which is the Code of Practice for Structural Concrete. Some of the provisions of IS 456 are also applicable for Priestess Concrete. There are some allied codes which are used for pre-stressed concrete structures in various applications. The first one is IRC 18-2000. It is design criteria for pre-stressed concrete road bridges, specifically for post-tensioned concrete. It is published by the Indian Road Congress. Now, this code is also in conjunction with the other codes published by the Indian Road Congress for bridge design. Another code is IRS Concrete Bridge Code 1997. It, the title is Indian Railway Standard Code of Practice for Plain, Reinforced and Priestess Concrete for General Bridge Construction. This is published by the Ministry of Railways. Now this code is also in conjunction with the other uh, codes for bridge design for the Indian Railways. Time to time, we may refer to some international codes. The two codes which we shall restrict ourselves are, the first one is SCI 318M02, the building code requirements for structural concrete and commentary. It is published by the American Concrete Institute. Now, this code is covers both structural concrete and pre-stressed concrete. 
The second international code is the BS 8110 part 1 1985. The title is Structural Use of Concrete part 1 Code of Practice for Design and Construction. This is published by the British Standard Institution and this code also covers the structural concrete. Next we are moving on to the basic concept of pre-stressing. The question that arises in our mind is what is meant by pre-stressing? To define it, pre-stressing is the application of an initial load on a structure to enable it to counteract the stresses arising from subsequent loads during its service period. That means the structure initially is loaded before any external load is applied. Next when the external load is applied, the previous stresses counteract the stresses due to the external loads. Now there are examples of pre-stressing even before the development of pre-stressed concrete. See the concept of pre-stressing existed before applications in concrete. Two such examples will be explained in this module. The first one is the force fitting of metal bands on wooden barrels. This type of barrels were used to transport liquid and oil and other types of um, grains. Now what does the pre-stressing does is the metal bands they create a hoop compression around the barrel. Now when this barrel is filled with the liquid, the liquid tries to have a hoop tension, it creates a hoop tension. Now the hoop compression created by the metal band counteracts the hoop tension that is created by the liquids while filling the barrel. The second example is the pre-tensioning of the spokes in a bicycle wheel. Here you can see that in a bicycle wheel each one of the spokes is pulled and tightened. Now this pre-tension is to such an extent that there will always be a residual tension in the spoke. Let me explain these two examples in the blackboard. When the barrel is first pre-stressed, the pre-stressing causes a hoop compression throughout the barrel. Next we are filling this barrel with liquid. Now this liquid creates a hoop tension That means the hoop tension that is created by the liquid is counteracted by the hoop compression that is generated due to the pre-stressing. The second example is the cycle spokes.
due to the tensioning of the spokes each of the tension uh, each of the spoke is under tension now when the rider rides on the cycle the weight creates some compression in the spoke but since there was an original tension and this tension is higher than the compression that comes each one in each one of the spoke there is a residual tension now this concept of pre stressing was applied in concrete and the definition of, of pre stressed concrete is also similar concrete in which effective internal stresses are induced usually by means of tungsten steel before the structure is loaded to counteract the stresses resulting from the applied service loads now here also the concept is similar that means initially after pre stressing the structure is loaded and then the uh, when the structure is subjected to the load the stresses due to pre stressing counteracts the stresses due to the external loads now why do we need pre stressing for concrete see the main reason is the concrete tensile strength is only 18 to 14 percent of its compressive strength this is the weak point of concrete now for flexural members cracks develop at early stages of loading flexural member examples of flexural members are beams and slabs if we gradually load the structure we shall observe that cracks are being generated in this flexural members now to prevent such crack compressive forces can suitably be applied in the longitudinal direction either concentrically or eccentrically now what does this pre stressing does is it counteracts this tensile stresses and reduces the chances of formation of this cracks now the pre stressing that is applied in flexural members this pre stressing is called linear pre stressing because the axis of pre stressing is same as the axis of the flexural member now the pre stressing enhances not only the bending capacity but it also enhances the shear and torsional capacities of the flexural members in the subsequent modules of this course you shall see that both the shear capacity and the torsional capacity are enhanced due to the pre compression that is introduced by the pre stressing there are other examples of pre stress concrete in cylindrical tanks the hoop tensile stress can be effectively counteracted by circular pre stressing now this concept is similar to the barrels that we have seen before that in before the tank is loaded the pre stressing creates a compression in the tank and then when the tank is filled up with water this water tries to expand the tank now the compression due to pre stressing counteracts the expansion due to the hydrostatic force and thus the chances of cracking gets reduced now although it appears to be quite mundane but the early attempts of pre stressing were not completely successful it was observed that the effect of pre stressing reduced with time now this following sketches will explain why this pre stressing force is to reduce in the earlier days the way the pre stressing was done was that initially a rod used to be pulled with an anchor at one end and then in the mold the concrete used to be placed and once the concrete has hardened the tension used to be released in the tendon and then this tendon used to be cut now this is the early form of pre stressed concrete by the mild steel rods 
but what happens is that after the hardening of concrete and when the tension is released from the rods the rods will try to regain their original length but this is prevented by the surrounding concrete which is bonded to the steel now thus the concrete gets effectively under a state of pre compression which is capable of counteracting the tensile stresses it was observed that this type of simple beams which were pre stressed initially it may have a good flexural capacity but with time it was found that the flexural resisting capacity got limited and if the load is kept sustained it was observed that sometimes the beams tend to fail now the question comes to our mind that why does it happen so that means initially it is found to be effective but with time it is found that the effect of pre stressing is getting reduced why this is so now one very important phenomenon of concrete is that concrete during hydration shrinks with time that means it tends to reduce in volume and there is a reduction in length moreover under sustained load it undergoes a creep strain now what is meant by creep creep is the strain under a sustained load now since there is a pre compression in the concrete this concrete over the time tends to get reduced and this is called the effect of creep the reduction in length due to creep and shrinkage is also applicable to the embedded steel that means when the concrete is shrinking along with that the embedded steel is also shrinking now when the embedded when the length of the embedded steel reduces it results in significant loss of the tensile strain that is originally it was under a substantial tensile strain but with time the length is reducing and the tensile strain in the in the steel is getting reduced after several years the residual strain and hence the residual pre stress can be as low as the 10% of the initial value or even lower than that now let's try to understand this by a simple sketch say in this beam the original length of the steel rod was l1 now it has been extensioned to a length which is equal to the original length of the concrete beam that is l2 this is the state of the beam before applying pre stress now when the rod is cut since the steel is applying compression in the concrete the concrete will tend to compress this is called the phenomenon of elastic shortening now after the elastic shortening the length of the beam reduces to l3 which is lower than the initial length of l2 that means at transfer of the pre stress the beam gets reduced due to elastic shortening then over a period say a few years there will be creep and shrinkage in the concrete and that will lead to further reduction in the length of the beam now let this length be l4 that means the length l4 is after the long term losses of pre stress see the long term losses is different from the short term losses the elastic shortening is the short term loss which is happening right at the transfer of pre stress but the long term losses is over a substantial period over a few years um, after the pre stressing operation has been done now if we have to calculate that what is the residual strain in the steel because it is the residual strain which will have the residual pre stress the residual strain is 
can be calculated as the original tensile strain in steel minus the compressive strains corresponding to short term and long term losses. So, in this expression we shall consider the tensile strain to be positive and the compressive strains to be negative that is why we have placed a subtraction for the compressive strain. For the example that we have shown before, the original tensile strain in the steel was L2 minus L1, where L2 was the original length of the beam, L1 was the original length of the steel rod. That means, when this rod was tensioned, the strain in the steel was given as L2 minus L1 divided by L1. Then there was the elastic shortening which had some which led to some compressive strain. Now, the short term loss in pre stress can be calculated by the strain which is L2 that means the original length of the beam minus L3 which is the length of the beam after the elastic shortening divided by L1 which was the original length of the steel rod this expression L2 minus L3 by L1 is the loss in the strain due to the elastic shortening of the beam. This can be called as the short term loss in the pre stress. Then over the time there is a compressive strain in the beam due to creep and shrinkage. This strain can be calculated by the simple expression L3 minus L4 by L1. L3 is the length after the short term losses that means the length at after the transfer of pre stress and L4 is the length after the long term losses. Now this expression of L3 minus L4 divided by L1 gives the compressive strain in the concrete and the loss in pre stress due to creep and shrinkage. This loss can be termed as the long term losses in pre stress. Now, if we subtract the second and the third term from the first term, then we arrive at the fourth expression which is the residual strain in the steel. That means, L4 is the final length of the steel rod, L1 was the original length divided by the original length gives me the final residual strain in the pre stressing steel. Now, in the earlier days when ordinary mild steel was used for pre stressing, there was a limit of the tensile strain that could be applied to the steel. This limit was based on the allowable tensile stress. Now, the maximum original tensile strain in mild steel was can be calculated as the allowable stress divided by the elastic modulus of steel. The allowable stress can be around 140 mega Pascal and the elastic modulus is around 2 into 10 to the power 5 mega Pascal. When we divide the allowable stress by the elastic modulus, the maximum original tensile strain is equal to 0 0.0007. Now, it was observed that the loss in pre stress due to the strains of elastic shortening, creep, shrinkage was almost of the same value was almost equal to 0 0.0007. That means, if the loss in pre stress is almost it gets almost equal to the original pre stress because the values of the these two strains are close and hence the residual strain was negligible and finally the effective pre stress almost become nullified over a period of years now this problem had led to several research on the type of steel 
the type of concrete and over the years over I would say over decades this problem was resolved with the development of the material properties of both steel and the concrete. The question was what was the solution to increase the residual strain and hence the effective pre stress. The first solution was to adopt high strength steel with much higher original strain. This leads of course to the requirement of high pre stressing force. That means compared to mild steel if we use a steel which has having a much higher tensile strength hence the allowable stress will be also much higher the initial tensile strength will be also much higher if I, if we are using a high strength tensile steel. Now with the development of the metallurgical process high strength tensile steel was developed and that was applied in the pre concrete. But if you are applying high strength tensile steel then we also need to have high pre stressing force we need to have adequate jacks to apply that high pre stressing force. The second development which helped the growth of pre stressed concrete is the development of high strength concrete. A concrete of 15 to 20 mega Pascal characteristic strength is not adequate for pre stressed concrete. At least it is recommended to have a, pre a concrete strength of 30 mega Pascal or higher so as to withstand the high pre stressing force. As I said that with the adoption of high strength steel the pre stressing force became large and for that the concrete had to be strong to withstand this high pre stressing force. Now with this the pre stress concrete became successful in the different applications of structural elements. Let me now move on to a brief history of the development of pre stress concrete. Before I start the development of pre stress concrete let us know two significant developments of reinforced concrete itself. The two major breakthroughs in the development of reinforced concrete is the first is the invention of Portland cement and second is the introduction of steel in concrete. That means the whole concept of reinforcing the concrete by steel it was a very innovative concept at the time. In 1824 Abstin in England he obtained a patent for the manufacture of Portland cement. In the earlier days concrete was made by lime and other types of natural materials, natural cementing materials. But we can see with the development of Portland cement an industrial product was developed which can give a very high strength uh, which can give a quite a large strength to the concrete. The development of Portland cement itself is a major breakthrough in the development of reinforced concrete. In 1857 Monnier in France he introduced steel wares in concrete to make flower pots, pipes, arches and slabs. Here we can see that the concept of reinforced concrete has started to evolve that means what Monnier did was place some steel wares to hold the cracked concrete and like that this the application of reinforced concrete started to develop. Although this applications of flower pots, pipes and arches may appear to be mundane at present but in during that time it was quite a significant achievement in the development of the concept of reinforcing the concrete. Now we are moving on to the major events of the development of pre stressed concrete. In 1886 Jackson of USA introduced the concept of tightening steel rods in artificial stone and concrete arches. So the arch form is a very was a very popular structural form used in different types of structures in buildings, in bridges. 
Now what Jackson did was he introduced a steel rod within the arch and increased its capacity by tightening the steel rod. Now in the arch itself, the arch itself is under compression, but if we introduce a steel rod and tighten it, that compression is further increased and hence the capacity of arch also increased. In 1888, Doring of Germany manufactured the concrete slabs and small beams with embedded tensioned steel. That means we can see that in reinforced concrete that the steel was just introduced, but now what they are, what the, these inventors were doing were tightening the steel rods in order to increase the capacity. In 1908, Stainer of USA, he recognized the losses due to shrinkage and creep. This was a major breakthrough to understand the problem of reduction of the effective pistis with time. The phenomenon of creep and shrinkage were identified and Stainer suggested to retighten the rods to recover the loss of pistis after a certain time. In 1923, Emperor of Austria, he developed a method of winding and pre-tensioning high tensile steel wires around concrete pipes. So during the industrial development of the 20th century, concrete became a very popular construction material and different types of innovative techniques were being developed to increase their capacity. And this winding of steel wires around concrete pipes and tensioning the steel wires to check their cracking was actually an instance of pre-stressing the concrete pipes with the tensioned steel wires. In 1924, Hewitt of USA, he hoop stressed horizontal reinforcement around walls of concrete tanks through the use of turn buckles. This, as I as we mentioned at the beginning, the concept of pre-stressing a barrel. Here we can see that the concrete tanks were being developed with pre-stressing them by some devices called turnbuckles. These turnbuckles are some device to tighten the reinforcement around the concrete tanks. Now over the period, thousands of these liquid storage tanks and concrete pipes were built in the decades to follow. That means as the industrial production of concrete is increasing, we observe that the application of pre-stressing is also increasing with the time. In 1925, Dill of USA used high strength unbonded steel rods. The concept of unbonded means there was no bond or there was no physical stress transfer between the steel and the concrete at the interface. The transfer of stress was only at the ends. Now the reason of using an unbonded steel rod was that the rods could be tensioned and anchored after hardening of the concrete and they could be again tightened so as to uh, counteract the drop in the pre-stress. In 1926, Eugene Fresinet of France used high tensile steel wares. We can see that he used a steel which was having an ultimate strength as high as 1725 megapascal. This is a much higher value than the reinforcement that is used in conventional concrete. And the ill stress of this type of high tensile strength rods was about 12, more than 1200 megapascal. You can, from your knowledge of reinforced concrete, you can understand that this is a substantially high ill stress. And with this type of high tensile steel, high strength tensile steel, the development of pre-stress concrete was possible. In 1939, he developed conical wedges for end anchorages of post-tensioning and developed double-acting jacks. 
see the priestess concrete is actually an industrial product. It needs more equipments and devices to apply this pre-stressing force and to transfer the pre-stressing force from the steel to the concrete. Now Fresnel developed this, developed and patented this type devices which devices like the jacks, the anchorages which were used in applying pre-stressing on the concrete members. Fresnet is often referred to as the father of pre-stressed concrete. In 1938, Heuer of Germany developed the long line pre-tensioning method. Now this method can be compared with the assembly line method in the manufacture of cars. It is under one industrial shed or in just in one line, several pre-stressed members were being produced. This technique was used to produce pre-tensioned uh, transmission poles for electric lines. In 1940, Magnell of Belgium developed an anchoring system for post-tensioning using flat wedges. So as I mentioned before that the pre-stressed concrete needs more equipments and devices. The development of the anchoring system which helps in transferring the pre-stress from the steel to the concrete was a major breakthrough in the development of pre-stress concrete because it is a successful uh, behavior of the anchors which can lead to the transfer of the pre-stress to the concrete. During the second world war, the applications of pre-stressed and precast concrete increased rapidly. Now what happened is that with mass production of concrete, the concrete became an industrial product. The concept of pre-casting concrete that means casting the concrete not at the place where it will exist but at a different place under a much better uh, control of quality. Uh, this pre-cast concrete became popular and along with that the pre-stressing of this precast members also became popular. In this lecture, the names of a few persons who were involved in developing pre-stressed concrete will be mentioned. Gouin of France built numerous pre-stressed concrete bridges in Western and Central Europe. So the, ap the application of pre-stressed concrete in bridge decks is a wonderful application. The bridge decks became of slender, their span increased and the aesthetics of the bridge profile became better. And in Europe, the application of pre-stressing the concrete bridges became popular during the 1940s and 50s. Apples in England introduced the concept of partial pre-stressing. Originally the idea was that pre-stressing force should be such that there will not be any tension in the pre-stressed concrete member. But it was found that with this objective, the amount of pre-stressing force is also substantially high. Due to that, the creep effect was also large. Sometimes the camber that means the upward deflection of the priestess members became too high and the sections were not turning out to be economical. That is why a new concept was introduced where some tension was allowed in the concrete and which is not detrimental to the concrete. Now when some tension is allowed in the concrete, this is called partial pre-stressing. That means now we have, we see a gradual move from the more conservative concept of fully pre-stressing the concrete member to partially pre-stressing the member such that when the member is under high loads, there are chances of even cracking, but those cracks will not be detrimental in the long run 
because in the service load under the service loads those cracks may not open up at all. Leonhard in Germany, Mikhailor in Russia and Lean in USA, they were very famous in the field of pre-stress concrete. Each one of them contributed to significant developments of the application of pre-stress concrete whether it is the bridge decks or the anchoring systems or the shell construction or different types of the applications of pre-stress concrete. We find that the professional who were involved in the pre-stress concrete, they formed the professional organizations. These professional organizations became a forum for the exchange of ideas and knowledge. The International Federation for Pre-Stressing Concrete, in short FIP, is a professional organization in Europe which was established in 1952. The Precast Pre-Stressed Concrete Institute, in short PCY, was established in USA in 1954. Now both these organizations are very well known in the uh, development and the transfer of knowledge of pre-stress concrete. Now the pre-stress concrete was being ap applied in various type of structures like building frames, parking structures, stadiums, railway sleepers, transmission line poles, water tanks and several other types of elements. In India also, the application of pre-stress concrete diversified over the years. One of the classic examples is the Pamban Road Bridge at Rameswaram, Tamil Nadu, which is a classic example of the pre-stress concrete girders. Now this is a picture of the Pamban Bridge and here you can see that in the central span, this the deck profile is so nice and this was possible because of the pre-stressing. Now <clears throat> the span was long and also you can see that there is a substantial navigational clearance because of the reduced depth of the pre-stressed uh, pre beam. As I mentioned before that bridges is a wonderful application of pre-stressed concrete. Later on we shall time to time we shall mention some of these applications and we shall show you some of the photographs of these applications of pre-stress concrete. Even in India there were major steps to change the railway sleepers from the original timber sleepers to pre-stress concrete sleepers. Water tanks and other type transmission line poles and other types of applications have become very popular in India. Next, let me explain the, de the history of the pre-stress concrete in terms of the development of the building materials. Now, in the ancient period, the buildings were mostly made of stone and bricks. Now, these materials were very strong in compression depending on the type of stone and depending on the quality of brick, massive structures have been made by these two materials because their inherent capacity to carry compression. But the disadvantage of these two materials was their weak, they were weak in tension. The reduced capacity in tension led to the limited range of spans of that we see in the ancient structures. If tension was needed, then bamboos and coir ropes were used. For example, in the suspension bridges of the earlier days, coir ropes were used to hang the suspenders and the deck from the main suspension cable. Subsequently, iron and steel bars were used to resist tension. But there is a problem with these members also that these members cannot carry high compression because 
they tend to buckle under compression. That means in one group we have stones and bricks which are strong in compression. In the other group we have bamboos, coirs, steel uh, and iron bars which are strong in tension. Now if the steel was molded into the form of a structural member like an eye section, then that type of structural steel and wood they were used both in tension and compression. That means we see that the wood beams that we see in the older buildings and the eye sections that we see only those members were able to carry both tension and compression at a time. Now in reinforced concrete, concrete which is strong in compression and steel which is strong in tension are judiciously placed to counteract the stresses that comes due to the external loads. The concrete resists compression and the steel resists tension. This is a passive combination of the two materials. Why we are saying passive is that none of these materials are stressed before the load is applied. The stress in these elements come only after there is some external load, maybe the, just the self weight when the self weight starts acting and whenever there is some external load then only these uh, materials gets stressed. That is why we are terming this combination as the rain, combination in reinforced concrete as the passive combination of concrete and steel. Whereas in priestess concrete we see that there is a combination of high strength concrete and high strength steel to resist the tension and compression effectively. But this, compression, this combination is an active combination. What we mean by an active combination is that even before the external loads start to apply, both these materials are stressed. The steel is under tension and the concrete is under compression after the pre-stressing operation. This stress is there even before some external loads come onto the member. Now this figure summarizes the development of building materials in a nutshell. As we said before that in the original structures in the olden days, the compression used to be carried by stones and bricks. They were strong in compression and weak in tension. Now the development of concrete which was originally a lime concrete and then it moved on to the cement concrete was termed as an artificial stone. The beauty of the concrete was that it could be molded and in any shape for the use uh, for which it is meant. Now the tension can be carried by bamboos and ropes which were the original uh, materials for carrying tension. Gradually they led to the development of the steel. Initially it was wrought iron and then subsequently it became steel. The steel bars and wares are also very good in carrying tension. But this was weak in carrying compression because they tend to buckle. Now there were some material which was equally capable of carrying compression and tension was the timber or wood and the structural steel which, is, which was an industrial product. These two materials and they were shaped in such a way that they were able to carry both compression and tension. Now in reinforced concrete we see a passive combination of the concrete and the steel. Why is it passive? Because there is no stress in either material before the external loads start to apply. Now with the development of both concrete and steel, high strength concrete was developed whose strength can be as high as 100 megapascal. And 
high strength steel whose ill strength and ultimate strength can be as high as say 1200 and 1700 mega Pascal respectively. Now, these two materials were combined to develop the pre-stress concrete. Now, the pre-stress concrete is called an active combination. The reason is that both these materials are stressed before the application of the service load. The concrete is compressed so that the tensile stresses may not generate under service loads. Chances of cracking gets reduced. The members can have a longer span and the deterioration of the steel is much reduced. That is why the pre-stress concrete has some additional advantages over the reinforced concrete. Now, in today's lecture, what we have covered is first we covered the basic concept that means, what is the definition of pre-stressed concrete? What we have found that pre-stressed concrete is the concrete where some initial stresses are induced in the concrete to counteract the stresses that comes due to the uh, service loads. Why do we need pre-stressed concrete? Because Concrete is weak in tension. To counteract this deficiency of concrete, the pre-stressing is done. Now, from the basic concept, we went into the, uh, we found also that the concept of pre-stressing was not just limited to concrete. This concept was there even before the application of concrete. We have seen the example of the barrels and the example of the spokes in the cycle wheels. Next, we moved into the early attempts of pre-stress concrete and we found that the early attempts were not successful. The reason was that, that concrete has a special behavior. It is the change in length or volume over the time. The first is the shrinkage which is a reduction in volume due to the hydration of the cement and evaporation of water. And the second one is the crip, which is the reduction in length due to the applic under the sustained uh, load. Now, in the earlier attempts of pre-stress concrete, both this phenomenon led to the reduction of the pre-stressing force. The original tensile strain got reduced because of the compressive strain that concrete was undergoing. And that is why the residual strength, the residual stress was subsequently much lower than the original pre-stressing force. And those early attempts of pre-stressing were not successful because of this long term effects. With time, this problem was identified. and Concepts of retightening the rods to overcome the loss in pre stress were introduced. Then we find that the development of the high strength materials, both the concrete and the steel, led to the better development of the pre stress concrete. For the due to the high strength steel, a much higher original tensile strain was possible. Even after losses, there will be substantial residual tensile strain in the steel. And since we were using high tensile steel, the pre-stressing force also became much larger. It was only high strength concrete which was able to sustain this high load. And the combination, a proper combination of this high strength concrete and the high strength steel led to more uh, economical and effective pre-stress members. We also went through the names of several pioneers in the development of pre-stress concrete. We found that the pre initially the pre-stress concrete started as uh, some tightening of the arches. Then we find its application in pipes, tanks and other liquid retaining structures. 
the application in bridges had were marvelous because the bridge structures the bridge decks became longer sleeker and aesthetically more appealing the development of the industrial products like jacks the turnbuckles the anchorage system they also helped in the development of the priestess concrete now with the industrial production of concrete the precast and the priestess structural members was becoming popular over the time during the mid 20th century there was a exponential growth of priestess concrete and in india also we find that priestess concrete became very popular over the years whether it is in bridges or in railway sleepers or in transmission line poles or in uh, liquid storage tanks we find applications in india and finally we discussed uh, the development of the priestess concrete in terms of the building materials we found that in one part we had member we had materials like stone and bricks which were uh, strong in compression and weak in tension on the other group we had ropes and steel bars which were strong in tension but weak in compression only wood and structural steel were able to combine them both now in reinforced concrete we find a judicious combination of the artificial stone which is the concrete and steel but reinforced concrete is an passive combination where there is no stress in either of the two materials but in priestess concrete what we find that the high strength concrete and the high strength steel are judiciously combined to have a member which is more effective in carrying the load now the priestess concrete is called a passive uh, is an active combination because both the materials are stressed even before the self weight or the external loads are acting the concrete is in compression to counteract the tensile stresses and the steel is in tension now due to this the pre-stressed concrete is much more advantageous than the reinforced concrete and in our next class we shall move on to the advantages of pre-stressed concrete as compared to reinforced concrete and also we shall learn about the different uh, terms that is used in pre-stressed concrete structures the different types of pre-stressing and we shall also move to learn the pre-stressing systems and devices that are uh, available uh, at present with nice illustrations and uh, sketches thank you